Blessed be God. In Christ we are blessed. In Christ we are chosen to live in the praise of his glorious grace. In Christ we belong in the family, adopted to live in the praise of his glorious grace. In Christ the great mystery of God is revealed, to live in the praise of his glorious grace. In Christ we are called to be blameless and free, to live in the praise of his glorious name. Blessed be God, blessed be the Lord Jesus Christ, blessed be the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. This is the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. Welcome to those who are gathered here in our sanctuary and welcome to those who are joining us by Facebook and YouTube. Sharon, I'm going to let you take this part away and, and help us learn a song. All righty. It's always great to hear all those little voices up at the front here. Um, so we're going to ask you guys, just come on up to the front, okay? Hop on up. Come on up here. You can come up by the steps. So we've got some actions for this song. And don't worry, you know, the, the older folk do the adults. I'm going to call you adult folk. You can do the, the, the actions too, okay? So this is, um, this is one of my favorite songs because you get to pretend like you're different animals, okay? So the first one's a butterfly, and you're going to thank the Lord for giving you wings. See if you can do that. Oh, wings. And a robin in a tree. You're going to pretend that you can sing. And then a fish in the sea. What do fish do? They wiggle and swim. And then there's the actions word, but I just thank you, Father, for making me me. I just thank you, Father, for making me, me. That's kind of cool. That comes up a few times, okay? And then we go through an elephant. Elephants raise their trunks. And we do a kangaroo. What do kangaroos do? Hop, hop, hop. And then an octopus. Thank you for my fine looks. Oh, yes. Don't be look fancy as an octopus. And then you've got a wiggly worm. Wiggly worm, woo! And a crocodile with my big smile, and then a fuzzy wuzzy bear for our fuzzy wuzzy hair. Oh yeah. Okay. Here we go. We're gonna start out with a butterfly. If I were a butterfly, I thank you, Lord. Thank you. 
That was awesome. I love that song. And today we're going to be talking about prayer, so let's learn how to pray, okay? Jesus, you are good and wise. I praise you when I rise. Jesus, hear this prayer I send. Bless my family and my friends. Jesus, help my eyes to see all the good you send to me. Jesus, help my ears to hear calls for help from far and near. Jesus, help my feet to go in the way that you will show. Jesus, help my hands to do all things loving, kind, and true. Jesus, guard me through this day in all I do and all I say. Amen. 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 Have fun in class, and we'll see you later. Let's march these kids out. We are not. Thanks, Sharon. <clears throat> we'll continue our service using the words for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend, Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise as you're able for our opening hymn, Sweet Hour of Prayer.
Let us pray. O Lord God, tireless guardian of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all this suffering world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verses 22 to 31. That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sweep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forever. And from Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 3. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 18th chapter, and this is frequently called the parable of the persistent widow. <clears throat> then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. And he said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea. Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people say, think, yet this widow keeps bothering me. I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come back and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he not keep putting them off? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, Will he find faith on the earth? This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> so a little known fact about me, I tend to notice the little details about people and about places, and it drives people crazy. I know. They keep telling me to stop overanalyzing things. Just accept them the way they are. Use the KISS method. You know what that is, right? Keep it simple, stupid, right? Yeah. But it does help me, this little quirk that I have, because I'm a big fan of Louise Penny and any of the other multiple murder mystery writers. And so when trying to figure out a complicated who done it? Something big always happens, but we skip over the little things as if they weren't all that important. And it's only in hindsight that it all falls into place. The little things were the real clues. Like, for instance, did any of you notice the first word of today's gospel? Anybody? Remember what it was? Mm -hmm. The first word, you would be terrible at murder mysteries. <laughs> the first word was then. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. And if you're anything like me, immediately you'd ask, well, what happened just before this? that led him to give this advice. Okay, any guesses what happened just before our gospel story today? Well, the Pharisees were asking Jesus when the kingdom of God would come. And he says, quite simply, it's already here. And then... He turns to his disciples and he instructs them about what's going to happen, what they need to be aware of, 
all the terrible things that people will do. And then he tells his disciples a parable to show them they should always pray and not give up. Always pray and never give up. Such good advice, regardless of what the time is or where we are or what's happening around us. Now, for some reason, prayer doesn't come easily to us. Jesus says, pray always. But if I were to ask for a volunteer right now, right this instant, right where you are, for someone to stand up and pray, could I get one? No, probably not, right? <laughs> There'd be a whole lot of panic in the room. That is the pastor's job. Why is she asking us to do that, right? I remember trying to pray and having no words whatsoever coming forth. It was the day my granddaughter was born. It was a particularly tough delivery and a whole bunch of stuff happened that shouldn't have. Waiting outside the delivery room doors was the great grandpa, the grandpa, and me. And between the three of us, there was a never ending stream of silent prayers storming heaven's gates. But once we were allowed in to meet this newest member of our family, words dried up like last fall's leaves. Her tiny lungs cried out in indignation. Her little fists tried to punch the fingers that poked her, and I stood silent. For all the times of being called upon to pray at happy and sad life events with other people, I had nothing. Now right at this moment, the beautiful words of Isaiah are are ready to be used. I have called you by name. You are mine. Or the words from Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. And from Psalm 139, you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's wombs. I've got those words now. But at that most sacred and holy moment, I had no words for what had just happened, what almost happened, what could have happened, what actually did happen. So I say this so you don't feel too badly if you immediately ducked your head and tried to hide when I asked for someone to stand up and pray a minute ago. And yet, Jesus says, Pray always and never give up. How can we do that when we're too scared or we're too self-conscious or we're too intimidated to try or when we, we don't have what we think are good enough words? One of the saints of the ancient church was St. Clare. She was a Franciscan, and she tried to teach her followers the beauty and the rhythm of prayer. And the story goes that even on her deathbed, Claire was trying to explain how to do everyday prayer. And she said, this is a quote, in the midst of life, consider Jesus' life Consider his humility, consider his blessed poverty and the countless hardships and the punishments he endured for our redemption. End of quote. Now, that quote might not be overly helpful right now, but in medieval times when Claire was alive and a cathedral or local church was being frescoed, you know, those paintings, those magnificent paintings they put on the ceilings and the walls, a painter would come to town 
And the models for the paintings were chosen as he wandered the local streets and interacted with the villagers and decided whose faces he would portray. So one day, you might go to church and find yourself in a fresco listening to Jesus preach. Or maybe your face would represent one of the disciples or one of the women who helped Jesus. Maybe one of your children would be there in the fresco listening to Jesus tell a story. However he chose to do it, you would be placed right in the story of the gospel. And your face would be central to the story. I would so much love to do that here, wouldn't you? And that's what Claire is basically asking us to do. Take the gospel for today and imagine yourself in the midst of the story. Who would you be most comfortable portraying? Would you be the nagging widow? Would you be the stubborn judge? Would you be the widow's cold and hungry child? Would you be the neighbor next door? Would you be one of Jesus' disciples listening to him? Or maybe, maybe even Jesus himself? What are you hearing? And what are you seeing? What are you smelling and tasting? Spend a few minutes really entering into the story and imagining what it would be like to be there. It might even remind you of my age-old question, where did you see God? Where do you see you? That exercise alone can keep you in prayer always and in a way that you can never give up. When I was in that hospital room, I did offer a prayer, but it wasn't a very profound prayer. What I wanted to pray was keep her from all harm. Give her a happy, healthy, and creative life. Spare her the pain and sorrow and violence in our world. Let her be successful. Let her marry well. Let her find a good job. Let her be a joy to her parents and a voice for a better world. <clears throat> Those words never found their way into my brain, <laughs> let alone coming out my mouth. So I prayed what I pray in most hospital rooms, whether in the presence of a newly born or in the soon to be dead. God bless you and keep you and may his face shine on you. And I marked the sign of the cross on her little newborn forehead. Did you know that anyone can say that. You don't have to be a pastor to say that prayer, and it is one powerful prayer. I can't guarantee that any of those for whom I pray will be spared the brokenness of life, but I can pray that our Creator guards them and keeps them and protects them and watches over them in the midst of all the little details of life. When I pray the Lord's Prayer, I can ask God to not only save us from the times of trial, but to keep us in the midst of all the little details that will surely come our way. Psalm 121, one of the most famous and favorite passages in all of Scripture, is all about God being there to keep us in the midst of all the stuff, big and little, that comes our way. Even Jacob struggles all night with God by the river Yabbok in our Genesis reading. And he's blessed by God, who never leaves him alone in that struggle. All of our readings this morning suggest to me that God delights in those who struggle with him, who show up day after day in prayer, 
who stay close and keep arms wrapped tightly around the one who alone can bless us. And God blesses those who can't get the words together but rely on others to do that heavy lifting. Despite our feelings of helplessness and frustration for this broken world, Jesus says, don't give up. If you're pacing the floor all night for a loved one who refuses help, keep praying. If your heart is broken or your heart is full, when you're, you've reached the end of your rope and there's no plans going forward, don't give up. When you pray for someone and they say, don't pray for me, keep praying. When you pray for someone who has no faith, who doesn't share your faith, don't give up. When your prayers never seem to be answered, keep praying. When it seems you don't have a godly word left in your imagination, don't give up. Keep looking for God in the smallest details. Experience him in the inevitable struggles and hold fast to his promises even in the darkest hours of the night. It's not really as hard nor complicated as we sometimes think. When the Son of Man comes, Jesus asks, Will he find faith on this earth? Faith that persists. Faith that struggles. Faith that doesn't give up. That's the question we all get to answer. Will such faith be found in us? And that is my constant prayer. Let's rise and sing together what a friend we have in Jesus.
we use the words of the Apostles' Creed to confess the faith in which we live. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the choir anthem, God Whose Farm is All Creation. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. We pray for our bishops, Susan and Michael, for faith communities around the world, for all the baptized, that they become skilled in compassion and grace and equipped to share the good news with all. Grant your followers persistence in proclamation and prayer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For air and sky, clouds and sun, that they provide rain to parched land and relief to flooded ground. Renew and restore our polluted atmosphere and empower us to be worthy stewards of creation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For judges, juries, and all who work in the judicial system, that they desire wisdom, seek truth, rule with fairness, and have the courage to do what is right. Eliminate oppression and injustice in our criminal justice system. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For all who are lonely, especially those who have newly arrived in an unfamiliar place, political prisoners without recourse to justice, hospital patients without visitors, and any who are ill or grief-stricken, Today we pray especially for Tammy, Pastor Christine, Laverne, Velma, and Florence, 
We give thanks for birthdays celebrated today. We pray for all who continue to help us during the pandemic, all who wait for tests, results, and treatments, and all those we name in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For all those who are engaged in advocacy work, that with the persistence of the widow, they lift their voices in seeking justice on behalf of others. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For those who have taught us faith and now rest in your heavenly peace, that we remember and give thanks for these saints who shared the gospel through word and deed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we leave this place and re-enter the mission field, receive this gift. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Let's rise and sing our closing, our sending hymn, number 760, For the Fruit of All Creation. Are they here? They're back here? Absolutely. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Happy birthday to you. And many more. Let's rise.
Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God. Thank you.